all of us to spend a little bit more time to think about who we really are, meaning what is our identity. Because what happens is, you know, life passes and, and we never take the time really to stop and think about, you know, all the things that we've done in the past, what do they really mean to us? And why are we doing what we are doing today? In fact, how many of you here are crystal clear on why they are here today? Not in Nya Chan, but why you are doing what you're doing every day? <laughs> Okay, half of the room. So I hope that after those two hours, 100% of the room is gonna be a little bit more clear. Maybe not 100%, but a little bit more clear on why you are here. And it all comes down to the stories you're telling yourselves. Michel told you his story. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story. And we all have different stories of how we grew up, uh, all the difficulties we face, all the opportunities we want, we, we, we uh, how do you say, we take the opportunities. So we all have different stories the stories you tell them yourself, they're gonna define who you're gonna become. Isn't that true? If, if I'm interviewing you today and I, I ask you, Mr. Kwok, yep. you want this job. <laughs> so tell me the story, tell me the best story you can, you can about you. You're gonna make a story. Hopefully the, the true story. <laughs> but you're gonna make a story. <laughs> and that story is gonna make me feel like I wanna hire Mr. Kwok or maybe not the right fit. Because you're here, we know you are a good fit, so don't worry. But if I was to interview you, you would tell me a story. So let me tell you a little bit about my story, why I'm here, because everybody hated me in the beginning, like Michelle said. Thank you very much. And Not except Mark, I didn't say hate. <laughs> you said hate. Didn't like. It. But I think that's because I didn't do a good job of explaining a story why I came back to Vietnam. So it started about five years ago. I was on vacation in Ho Chi Minh City and I had the chance to visit the, the War Museum. How many of you have visited the War Museum yeah, already? Yeah. All of you, almost. So for those of you who didn't, I really recommend it. I personally don't like museums, but that one is really interesting because you really get to see you know, all the objects they used during the war. And there is a wall at the back. I remember it's at the, at the back, right, um, how do you say, far back, on the right of the museum, filled with black and white pictures. <coughs> of all the things, all the horrible things that happened during the war. <coughs> and there is one photo that I'm gonna share with you because it's a bit gory, but one photo that really shocked me and that moment changed my life. And just to describe you that photo, it, it's an American soldier, so he's holding the body of what remains of a Vietnamese soldier who's dead. And you can see the head of the Vietnamese soldier you know, dangling and you can see the, the arms and the legs. And the guy is holding the body like that so somebody takes the photo, and what's shocking is you can see the guy has a smile on his face. Yeah. Kind of prou proud or whatever, I don't know. So it really shocked me to see that photo. And so it was my vacation, I came back to Paris, and because of that photo, I started to do some research about the Vietnam War. You know, my parents came in France in 83, and so I didn't have l a lot of discussions about, about the Vietnam War with them, but when I came back from Ho Chi Minh City, I had those discussions. They explained to me a lot of different things and I did my own research, so I Googled it. I found all those terrible stories on Wikipedia and what bothered me was that, you know, decades and decades and decades after the war, even now as we speak, there are still families that are being affected by the war or by the consequences of the war, such as the, the uh, orange agent. So it infiltrates the soil, it's a terrible chemical and then you know, people, people give birth to, child, to children who are um, misformed, that the one deformed. word? Deformed. So, for example, they have three legs or they have no feet. So they are really, it's a terrible thing that happened because of that war, decades and decades and decades after the war. And so I was in my, in my bedroom in front of my computer doing that research. As I could read those, those mis um, different stories, I could see those different photos it really shocked me and I started to cry doing my research in front of my computer. And so that day something changed inside of me. I thought, you know, I'm gonna do something positive. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring a big change to Vietnam. I don't know what yet, but I want to come back and I wanna make a difference. Now that was five years ago. So I started to talk about it with my friends, with my colleagues, with, with my parents. What do you think my parents said? Don't do it. You're freaking crazy. <laughs> You're freaking crazy. We left Vietnam, you wanna go back, You're crazy. What do you think my boss said? When I said, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I have a good job, good salary, but I wanna go back to Vietnam, I wanna do this. He said the same thing. 
my colleagues, same thing, say, come on, keep this job. I was in the banking industry at that time, good pay, oh, a job, frankly, that has no meaning, but, <laughs> you know, that, well, that's what people do in France. They have a good job, they have a good pay, they pay the bills, and that's it, that's life for them. But so I decided I'm gonna do something else. And so five years later, here I am, you know, standing in front of you, trying to, we're gonna try to find your obsession. What is that moment in your life that changed? And if you think there is no moment that changed your life, you're wrong. There is a few defining moments in your life where something has changed in your mind, something has changed in your heart, and I hope that that something is the, one of the reasons why you are here working, working at Wall Street. And so, a few years later, I go to Bangkok, I meet with Michel, completely randomly, in fact. Somebody gives me his phone number, I call, call him, he invites me to his office, and he shows me the school, he says, I had the best school for English. I had the best English school for English. For other, sorry. <laughs> in the world. And he shows me Silom at, at that time, the head office and the center. I said, great. Now I asked him a question because I'm French. He's French. We have a terrible accent. We are, we are crap at English. <laughs> so I said, Michel, you're French. Why do you, why do you teach English to, to people? Why don't you um, teach French? And guess what he said? Guess what he said? English. Sorry? You can't speak French. No, that's not what he said. He said, I believe, I believe English is the first stepping step to changing your life. And, and, and then he showed me the wall at the, at the head office that says, we change people's lives. He said, this is why I do Wall Street English. Not because I want to teach English. I want to teach English because it's going to change their lives. And that day, that vision that he shared with me stuck with me. And I said, okay, great. Why don't we work together? I had absolutely no um, understanding of no knowledge about Wall Street English before I met with Michelle, but we, we, we decided to work together because we have the same vision, we have the same passion. We have that obsession that is, let's change people's lives. And then of course he said, in, you know, in a few years I'm gonna go to Vietnam, so why don't we start working together in Bangkok, which we did. So today what I would like to share, with, what I would like you to do, is to share a little bit about your personal stories. Now we're gonna do it step by step. It's gonna take about two hours. If we do it fast, if you are good students, maybe an hour and a half and then you can go for lunch. <laughs> so it's gonna depend on your you know, um, uh, proactivity in doing the, the exercise. And as a warm up, I'd like you to look at those pictures. <coughs> because stories are only, I mean, are only um, a result of connecting the dots between different pictures, be be between different moments in your life. So in groups of two, we're gonna do a small warm-up. So there is a, a young man here, you have some water here, you have a tree in the middle, you have a businessman and you have a sexy lady. Now I want you in group of two, and I'm gonna give you two minutes to connect the dot between those five things and make up a story. Any story is fine. It can be a gangster movie, it can be um, um, a story with sexy woman, it can be anything, but it has to connect those five elements. All right, and then I'm gonna ask a few of you, so what story can you tell by connecting the dots between this young man, some water, a tree, a businessman, and a sexy lady? <laughs> and then I'm gonna share with you the real story behind this, all right? Yeah. And I'm sure nobody, nobody in this room will guess what is the true story behind this thing. No clue. All right, so you have two minutes. By group of two with your neighbor, start to think about what story can we tell based on this, and then I'm gonna ask two or three groups to share. All right, you have two minutes.